Hey what's up guys, this is a complete U-turn from what I normally post on my channel, but considering I have been spending a lot of time diving into the lore surrounding Duviri and Zaraman and Deimos, I'd like to introduce a concept that I think is going to be introduced in the next arc of Warframe. Now as a disclaimer, there is no theory about making the jump to Tau, a third orb fight or other things like that here, because personally I don't think that's the direction that Warframe is going to be taking. Like making the jump to Tau is something that Yonta directly references, but I think it's more regret and almost a cope. Now if you haven't been following uh, Warframe Twitter, uh, I'll give you a brief rundown. Warframe Twitter has been posting a series of seemingly cryptic videos that uh, have a consistent theme, this being doors. The first post is the Jupiter Vault door. When you interact with the different panels and figure out the puzzle, you are opened up to a secret laboratory. Now, this is in direct reference to the Amalgam program, where the Amalgams are a combination of sentient and corpus technology. The second post is the Oricon door, which introduced in update 10 is a means to access corrupted mods, which gives a large bane. Now, these mods are essential to min-maxing your endgame experience. You can achieve 400% strength with a large portion of this coming from blind rage and transient fortitude. The keys you require to access the door come from a void room in the clan dojo, which requires the void traces to craft. Oh, these t keys are also a bane to the player. These banes correspond as follows. Bleeding key, which is negative 75% health. Decaying key, which is 75% negative shield. Extinguish Dragon Key, which is minus 75% damage, and Hobbled Key, which is minus 50% speed. Now, Quill's Door. Uh, the Quills are a secret society that protect the people of Seethers. Quill Onko is not only aware of the uh, sentient threat, he also supplies the means to kill a Terrorist, Gauntlets, and Hydralist, this being through the AMP system. And the Umbral Polarity is similar to the symbol on the door. Now, the Umbral Polarity may not just be representative of Excalibur Umbra, but an anti sentient uh, symbol as sentient slash umbral mods give extra damage to sentience and sentient specific damage reduction and amps are also a means to destroy an eidolon shields which are sentient shields without the adaptation mechanic the last short video as of today is the oricon speed door challenge now i think this specific short video is a reference to the potential release of Gorse Prime, because if you don't know, the development team has consistently shown to release three individual non-primed frame concepts per year, which correspond with Q1, Q2, and a third one between Q3 and 4, and three primed reskins, which follow the same pattern. Now, other than that, the lore all point towards Void Exploration and the Man of the Wall using Deimos, Zaraman, and Viri. Now, the Heart of Deimos quest introduces lore about Albeck and Tradi and the entirety of Deimos, how his exploration of the Void leading him to really and figuratively piercing the veil and eventually falling into Duvir very Scholar's Landing is where I believe Albrecht and Tradi landed, however it is said in the Deimos logs that Albrecht saw himself staring back at him oh, after this quote void in Trati, and I'm going to reference this um, void that wasn't previously there with him as he fell into the void. Um, I'm going to reference this shadow form as like void in Trati calls Albrecht Little Bengal, which is also a reflection of Man on the Wall. Man on the Wall's perpetual torment through jump scares and the Hey Kiddo line, which through my own research in the game and not exposing myself to other lore theories, I've seen a distinct lack of mention in this symbolism of Albrecht and Trati showing his Oricon mask being placed on his face which is representative of a half moon shape which is unbroken but the iconography of lore shown in the reference to the void shows a broken mask and this is seen in the Vome log which is order in the Requiem room behind Lloyd. The statues in the Deimos vaults show the mask with a fully intact half moon where Entrati's mask is when facing the void is seemingly broken. A voidborn or Albrecht is also reinforced by the quote from Archimedean Yonta, where she is heard saying, I had the Albrecht in Trati dream again. It's always the same. I ask him where he's gone, and he says, everywhere. Then he tears himself in half. Now the fact that she says he tears himself in half means 
if you've ever ripped something, you have to exert force in two different directions just to, t say, tear a piece of paper. Do I think that Albrecht went out of his way to literally, like, rip himself in half? I don't know. Maybe he was ripped in half by an unseen entity. I don't know. Archimedean Yonta, who is on the Zaraman, is also heard saying, You've seen things in the Deep Void too, haven't you? Lashing like dragons and bellowing like giants. Now, I think I think this is a blatant reference to void dragons or oro worms seen in Daviri. You can sometimes see them if you're traveling in a railjack between missions, sometimes they'll appear in your peripheral. The fact that she says deep void implies that the void is like an ocean, and we are using railjacks to travel this place. Now, the implication stating that Daviri as a place is also in the deep void, this also tells us that there is depth to the void if we use the ocean as a metaphor. There is no place in Duviri called Scholar's Landing, as I believe it was cast away from the collection of islands that we call Duviri. Akrathus has been heard saying in Duviri logs about, or talking about, Duviri lost islands were literally smashed by Thrax, and a uh, quote as follows, It seems that some of the lost islands were smashed by Thrax the king, as a child might smash a toy. Others have been obliterated by hazards unknown. The void is an ocean, it is said, and monsters dwell in its depth, but the vast majority of the islands have simply fallen to the void's creeping encroachment as the tides wear away at the land. Now, this direct quote tells me that just like currents in the ocean and high tide and low tide and a rising tide in regards to the lack of existence of a scholar's landing seen in the map i think lack of a presence of scholar's landing and a thrax's attitude in regards to casting islands out i think as a result of intradi's void -born form landing in deviri after he set himself up in the lab thrax being a representative of the operator himself saw void intradi for what he was and cast away the island out of fear now this is complete theory but i also believe that this is where the story may go i will also point out that it is not abnormal for digital extremes and the development team to introduce concepts ahead of time to smoothen out the content that's going to be released in the future. So Daviri, Deimos, and the Zaraman all connect is that all uh, all dismembered fingers point towards the man in the wall and Albrecht and Tarati and exploring the depth of, or the sheer depth of the of the void and the main theory or oh, the main proof of this theory I have is the Heart of Deimos, which I referenced in the very start of this video, where um, the the Heart of Deimos introduces the lore about Albrecht and Trite and how his exploration of the Void led him to piercing the Veil and eventually falling into, into Daviri. I think that because of this, everything is connected to Trite, the Void, and Man in the Wall, and I am eager to see where the um, where the story goes from here. Also, keeping in line with themes and using the logs from the Zaraman Daviri in the Heart of Deimos quest, as well as spending some time realizing that the quest, the Rising Tide, all points to exploration of the Void itself. Even the Railjack quest resemble the Railjack quest name is Rising Tide, resembling either a boat or ship. We may be exploring the figurative ocean in depth through the next arc. Now. To directly acknowledge uh, Tau, Third Orb fight and other things like that, I'll make it quick because this video is already long enough. Do you think that making the jump to Tau, introducing an entirely new free roam area as well as like different models is practical? Because I simply think it is not. Uh, Rebecca is... I, I believe it's Rebecca. I can't find the clip anywhere, and this uh, this is second-hand information from someone on Reddit that I interacted with about how not only is it not the way that they want to continue the story of Warframe, but it is also not practical in my perspective for spreading plays out so far and so thinly. It's also shown that the sentients have a distinct interest in the origin system and this is also where Pazul is and Pazul being the big bad from the new war so with that kept in mind I don't think we're going to be traveling out in terms of origin system space towards Tau 
but we may be exploring deeper into the void because that's all uncharted territory as far as I'm aware. Anyway, this has been a really long lore post. Thank you very much for watching this far, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.